What's going on guys, Jacob here, Miami Dolphins Syndicate, another winners and losers video, this time for the 13-6 victory over the Washington Commanders. So for my first winner, had this group in the losers category for the first game, I'm just going to say the entire quarterback group as my first winner. I thought this was a much better performance from the group as a whole, still not great, but definitely much improved from the first game of the preseason. Started off with Tua who went out there 5-5, for 5, 51 yards, found the end zone on a 4th and 1, fade route to River Craycraft in the back right corner of the end zone. He looked very comfortable out there, notably without the big guys, without Tyreek Hill, without Jalen Waddle, who were all inactive uh, for the game. How we're going to the next string of guys, and that is a big question mark about Tua because last year when Tyreek Hill missed time, when Jalen Waddle missed time, you certainly saw a dip in the offense. And while that is certainly expected, when you're at the end of the season, you needed your quarterback to step up. And there were times where we necessarily did not get that from Tua. It's preseason. It gets against a bad team. However, Tua looks good. Again, with the, the lack of weapons, still looks really good out there. And then you go beyond Tua to Scott Thompson and Mike White, which last week I called the worst quarterback to battle in the entire NFL. And while I'm still not excited necessarily about the two of them going forward as the quarterback too. I do feel a little bit better now going into our final game of the preseason and the regular season than I did then. It was a little bit of a better showing. First off with Skylar Thompson, 8 of 15, 61 yards. Had a connection with, I believe it was Braxton Berrios in the end zone, which would have been a touchdown. Hit Berrios directly in the chest. Berrios drops it, uh, and the Miami Dolphins have to settle for a field goal on that drive. But Skylar Thompson looks comfortable sitting in the pocket and running the offense, which has been a big question mark of Skylar Thompson at this point in his career. He's certainly somebody who prefers to get on the move and cannot necessarily read past his first option that well. So just to see him sit more in the pocket and look at what the defense is giving him, being able to break down a defense, saw a few good anticipation throws from Skylar Thompson that weren't anything revolutionary, but a very solid performance from Skylar Thompson. He still has the athleticism and is a talented quarterback, but I like to call him a great quarterback, except for when it comes to throwing the ball, because Everything else is great. Everything up to the point of the ball, the release of the ball seems to be great. He has the height. He has the athleticism. He has the arm power. All these traits that are good to have in an NFL quarterback. However, you do find yourself sometimes asking for more when he does release the ball. Overall, I thought it was a good performance by him. And then Mike White comes in, then with the third group of guys, and looks fine. He played the entire second half, 11 of 20, 116 yards, 5.8 yards per attempt. He looked good. He looked solid, mostly going to Eric Azukama, who is still somebody that is on the fringes of this team and made some good connections with sack three times. However, you look at the passer rating of all three quarterbacks, an average of 84.2, a massive step up from what I believe was 42 last week. Overall, in general, I was pretty pleased with the performance of the quarterbacks. For my first loser, I know I'm going to get some flack about this. In fact, I've already gotten a little bit of flack of this opinion from Donovan just based off his performance yesterday, or on Saturday rather, and that is going to be Eric Ezukanma as my first loser. Don't get me wrong, in the game he played well. Five catches for 63 yards was the leading receiver for the Miami Dolphins and was really big in the towards the end of the game in the fourth quarter when we needed to keep drives alive. He certainly was able to do that and he's available on the field right now, which has been the biggest question mark about Eric Ezukama. The play was good. I think he played really good. However, my issue with Eric Ezukama comes from when he was playing, not in the fact that he was playing well against third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh string guys, which is something to note. But Eric Ezukama was out there with six minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. To me, that tells me a lot about where he's at in the pecking order. You look at the most recent depth chart, Eric Ezukama, I believe, was listed as wide receiver seven or eight. You're probably going to keep six or seven wide receivers on the roster. He has the issues with the injuries, and that has already been an issue so far through training camp as he's missed a lot of training camp through uh, so far, did not play in the opening preseason game, if I'm not mistaken, maybe he did, but just off the top of my, my head, I don't believe he did. Or if he did, he did not have a, a pretty massive impact. But he was out there running routes, got catches, got more catches in this game than he has in his entire, entire career. But just for when he was out there, again, the yards don't matter to me. Who he was going against doesn't necessarily matter to me, but just the fact that he was out there at that point in the game and did not see a lot of him before that point in the game it does concern me for whether he is going to make this team or not. So my second winner is another pass catcher. However, he was in the game much earlier on, played with both Tua and Skylar Thompson. This is going to be Jonu Smith. 
John Smith played good. Again, like Eric Exakama, I'm not really concerned about his stats. Four catches, 23 yards, somewhere in that range. Played well, but I love what I saw from John U. Smith in terms of the variety of things the Miami Dolphins were asking him to do. I was talking with Donovan earlier this week and what we talked about came to fruition in the game. It's nice to see a tight end that can actually add to the offense. You had Durham Smythe last year and you've had a collection of guys like Julian Hill as backup tight ends that have picked up the spare couple couple catches every now and then but never really were massive contributors to the offense and while Jonu Smith is probably not going to be a 800 yard eight touchdown guy at the tight end position and if he is it probably means there's a whole host of injuries from other positions on the team what I do like about Jonu Smith is he does add something and adds a layer to this offense that this team previously did not have Mike McDaniel coming over from the San Francisco 49ers offense had George Kittle who was everything to that team was asked to do a whole mo whole multitude of things including blocking including deep shots including over the field underneath routes in the flat he could do a lot of different things for the san francisco 49ers and while john o. smith certainly isn't as good as george kittle he's clearly a very versatile player we saw him take an end around where he gained some yards we saw him catch something out in the flat we saw him run a variety of routes and while Durham smythe was asked to participate in the receiving game at times, was never really a guy you expected to get over 300 yards on the season, really, if that. Jonu Smith is going to have plays designed for him to be the number one option, and not just like a little outlet where, you know, we would see Durham Smythe run 10 yards up the seam and kind of just stop there in the middle of the zone, and, and that would be the first look for Tua. Jonu Smith is going to be asked to do a, a very wide variety of routes, as well as he he's a decent blocker, not necessarily a great blocker, but he does have experience doing that with the Titans, the Patriots, the Falcons last year, where Arthur Smith got really some of the best usage out of Jonu Smith last year on the Falcons, coming off of what a, one of his better seasons. And I was a really big fan of Jonu Smith when he was back on the Tennessee Titans, goes to New England, didn't necessarily have the greatest of time, and then last year was competing with Kyle Pitts for some serious, meaningful targets, and now he is, without a doubt, the surefire number one tight end in this offense, and he has athleticism. He's, a little, he's quick, he has good hands, he's reliable, he can block a little bit. He adds a deeper layer to this offense that... I don't think we have ever seen with Mike McDaniel. I think we had Gesicki for the first year of Mike McDaniel, and I, I'm just not a big Mike Gesicki fan. I, I, Once I really got to see him for what he was, I was never really a Mike Gesicki fan, but I love what we're getting here in Jonu Smith. Versatility, athleticism, speed, almost everything you want in a tight end you find here in Jonu Smith, and I think it's a great acquisition that the Miami Dolphins were able to bring him in. So my second loser for this is going to be special teams. Special teams wasn't necessarily bad, and there weren't a lot of glaring issues that I took away from the performance on Saturday. It was a overall decent game from the Dolphins. They controlled the majority of the game. They were clearly the better team out there, so there's not a lot to point the finger at and say this is necessarily a problem. However, the special teams was a bit of an issue. Second game in a row that Sanders has missed a field goal, and he was rock solid reliable last year for the Miami Dolphins he started a really hot run all the way back to two seasons ago final game of the season where he almost single-handedly won us the game against the Jets to get us into the playoffs however now his two first games of the preseason has missed a field goal in each but for me he's earned a bit of leeway he's earned the ability to miss a couple especially in preseason as long as he comes around by the time the season uh, is is with us i'm not a big fan of jake bailey jake bailey does not have one of the bigger legs in the league we actually saw him doing some work on the kickoffs and the first one rolled into the back of the end zone but i'm again i'm not really concerned about that but bailey does not have the ability to really flip field position i think his long on the day was pushing 50 it was like 40 i think 47 something in that range and just doesn't have the biggest boot doesn't have the best hang time and there are certainly a lot of contracts on this team that prevent the Miami Dolphins from going out and spending big money on a punter like when we were able to bring Thomas Morstead in when there was there was a lot of cap room still to do something like that instead now you're just kind of dealing with what you got Jake Bailey's not gonna be a punter that necessarily wins you games and I don't feel great about let's say the Miami Dolphins are held at their own 35 40 yard line for Bailey to then pin the opposing team within their 10 or even five yard line the, again not the biggest leg in the world I just I'm not really inspired from our punter position 
But in an ideal world, you don't have to be in an I ideal world. You never see the punter out walk out there one time. If you, the less you see a punter, that probably means you guys are doing pretty good. So, not a massive concern team wise, but certainly not the greatest performance from our special teams guys. And our final winner is very refreshing to see. It is our rookie edge rushers, Chop Robinson and Muhammad Kamara. Chop Robinson officially with a sack. I say officially because Muhammad Kamara was not officially given a sack. It was taken away as they said the quarterback was running at the time where he was tackled. You're splitting hairs at that point. It's basically a sack. He, ta he tackled him in the backfield for a loss. Basically a sack from Muhammad Kamara and certainly a sack from Chop Robinson. Chop Robinson exploding off the line to meet Driscoll in the backfield. And if the handoff took a split second longer, he may have tackled both the quarterback and the running back on the play. He's extremely explosive, really talented guy, and is going to have to play meaningful snaps early on in the season while edge rushers Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips continue to heal from their injuries. He is going to be asked from day one to play real minutes on this Dolphins team that needs to pick up wins early on in the season. So he got his sack and then again Muhammad Kamara shooting off the edge very similarly very explosive that we saw from Chop Robinson. Both of them in my mind in my heart as Dolphins fans we can both say they got a sack. They looked good. They're going to have to both play. Kamara obviously is expected to not get as much playing time earlier on the season uh, compared to Chop Robinson, just the pecking order of where they were drafted. And we've heard a lot of good things from Chop Robinson coming out of camp so far. I don't expect either of them to run away with the starting job when everybody is fully healthy, but I was still very impressed from what I saw from a rookie edge rusher. And then finally... Our last loser is just team injuries where we saw a few more injuries sustained out there, including David Long and River Craycraft after he caught his touchdown. You're looking at Brooks out of the backfield. I believe he left with a concussion. Injuries were something that played in the Miami Dolphins all season long last year, and then we're already coming into the season with Jordan Poyer, Odell Beckham, and a few other guys dealing with injuries at the moment. So the Dolphins are already expected to go into week one without some of their star players, something that we already talked about, like Brad Riley Chubb and Jalen Phillips for sure are all but guaranteed to not play week one. Maybe Phillips if everything works just perfectly, but I highly doubt that to be the case. Injury upon injury, and you look back to last season, you don't want to blame injuries for why the Miami Dolphins fell apart, but you can't ignore the fact that injuries were a massive reason that the Dolphins lost some games that they may have won. You look against those good teams that we played, and while you look at what happened in that Ravens game where they just dismantled us in the second and third quarters, and you know by the time the fourth quarter came around, there was no reason Chubb should have been in that game. But then you look at the Bills game very next week, having a lead in the fourth quarter, and I remember when the fourth quarter started, I just had a feeling that we weren't going to pull it off, and that obviously ended up being the case. If you have a few more of your guys out there, especially on defense, maybe you end up winning that. Maybe you get a home playoff game for like the first time in my lifetime, Second time in my lifetime because we did have that game uh, against the Ravens. I think it was 08, 09, something like that. But I haven't seen a home playoff game yet. I want it. Didn't get it. And a big part of it was the injuries that fortunately continue to stack up. So I, I definitely understand why they are not playing the likes of Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle and Jalen Ramsey, uh, Javon Holland, some guys that you know how they play. You know how good they are. And all or three of the four guys and. I don't think Holland had an injury last year, but I know Tyreek, Waddle, Jalen Ramsey all had their own injuries last year they had to deal with. So sitting in the preseason is probably a smart idea. Make sure you have your stars out there ready to go. You saw Tua go out there for one series, played extremely well, and then it came out. That was the exact right move. You don't want any of your star guys to get hurt. You want the starters or the projected starters to all be available for week one. You lose David Long, Craycraft, Brooks, and a couple other guys. We'll see the updates on them throughout the week. Probably come out with a, a injury update video at some point, but you just gotta cross your fingers that those guys are okay. The other guys that are hurt will be coming back soon, and then just get through this final preseason game unscathed, ready for week one in what three weeks' time now from the time of recording this. So that's our winners and our losers, some of both. 13 to 6 game, especially in that second half, it really kind of sputtered out. It, there was not a lot of both, and there was nothing that really glaringly jumped off the page from one extreme to the other 
you win the preseason game, we get more reps out there, we saw a little bit more of the starters, and then we'll see how the third and final preseason game goes. I'm excited for it, and I'm excited for this season finally to start. Let us know down below in the comments what you thought of the game. Let us know your winners. Let, your, let us know your losers. Do you disagree with some of my opinions? Let us know down below in the comments. While down there, hit that like button. Hit that sub button. We appreciate you all very much. We'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day. Go Dolphins.